a little closer to the center of AP Hill. And, and I think that's kind of what you're working on. There may be some things in the resolution that I personally don't agree with, but I think we owe it to the citizens of Caroline, you know, Port Royal, Port Tobago Bay. We owe it to them to show our support. Mm -hmm. And that's really what, what we're doing. Uh, as Mr. Aker says, the train is rolling. Anybody on the tracks is going to get run over. I understand that. What we're really asking is the Army's consideration to move all of those explosions a little closer, fur further away from the residents. And I know you as a good soldier, when you get orders, you do your darndest to make sure those orders get carried out. We can't give you orders. We're just asking you to help us. And from, from the conversations that we've had, I see you're working with that. And I really hope that, that we'll, we'll continue to work that way. So that's really where I am. Thank you, Mr. Rosa. OK. Hey, Lieutenant Colonel, uh, I guess one of my questions, you, you talked about the dialogue and the, um, the, the opportunity to do that. And Mr. Sula said, as soon as we can, 10 days or so. But what will a, uh, the MOU do? I mean, does it address? I mean, this information is on our web page, so I guess you may have pulled the resolution up and know what it is. So we would get the answers to all these these concerns in the, in this dialogue, and the, and the MOU will address the, the sorts of things that's brought up on this. I mean, this is really a question document, the, the resolution, I, I would say. So would you, would the MOU address a lot of these issues? Um, that's discussed in this? I think the joint it? committee could, could determine that. Uh, some of the documents provided tonight, in addition to the, the completed noise study, and we're going to also be still delivering that noise study tomorrow, the next few days, to those, those citizens that assisted us on the test, including the raw data that they asked for. There's a document there, a fact sheet, that talks about some of those issues raised in the resolution. It's in here? It's, it's inside that packet. Okay. Um, I think the MOU needs to be something of an understanding of what the question asked being, will we move, move uh, demolitions range from point A to point B? We will show what we have done so far. We have made movements of ranges to accommodate. So some of these things some folks are asking for have already been, have already been done, but I don't think everybody understands that. And that's part of the, 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 the intent of an MOU. Okay, uh, what page in this document is the, uh, the fact sheet that you talked about that addresses all the issues? In the there, there should be a cover page, and the next page should be a uh, two to four page fact page sheet. Page two? Yep. Okay. Labeled fact sheet. I see it. Okay, and this addresses all the issues that we had in our... Yes. It, it, yes, it does. And we just got this? Yes. We did. Board members, and a lot of those questions were, at, were answered in articles, et cetera, uh, in the past as well. Did y'all get a packet on your No, desk? not everybody received a packet. A packet went to the clerk no. of the board, uh, okay. to you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have a copy for the mayor of Port Royal, uh, and it attempts to make multiple copies of the 109-page document tonight. Uh, we had a copier film. Well, I, I just caught that you said the fact sheet addressed the issues with yes. the resolution. Yes. Then we just, this is one we're set. just not getting. This is one set. Pardon me, sir. What, what we just got is one set of documents. Uh, I think it's two. Uh, Mr. Ashcraft oh, okay. and the chairman of the board. You have a third set? Okay. Oh, okay. But there should be a fact sheet, I believe. We'll just share these. Okay. Thank you. All right. yeah. Okay, and that's more information to digest. Uh, and that I haven't had a chance to look at. Yeah, those are yet, ma matters for consideration. Okay. But we do have a, the, the work, the MOU, what types of things would we address in an MOU? I think there would be, well, what we collectively understand, mm -hmm. what, what the Army has done, what we have, we, the steps we have taken to meet the, meet the needs of the citizens while balancing our needs uh, to provide training areas uh, for National Defense Forces. Okay, and in there we're gonna, we would probably want to clearly codify if the Army wants to deviate or anybody, any party to this, signatory to this wants to deviate, 
there has to be an understanding of what that process is, okay? And it's going to, it will stay exactly what the environmental documentation says, uh, that an entire, entire environmental documentation procedure must go forward to make any changes. Okay. All right. So what I'm hearing, there's a, uh, a joint committee that's going to be established. Out. Yes. Can I, can I sort of facilitate this a little bit? Because Mr. Popowitz and I have, have sort of just sort of laid some stuff out and checked with the county attorney. But uh, go ahead and lay what, out, what you have out if you'd like. Yeah, I mean, let me finish and then you can do your thing. But basically, you're talking about doing a joint committee, something we haven't done before. And you've talked about an MOU that will address a lot of the concerns that you had, that we had. That you had, that the community had. In this fact yeah. sheet mm -hmm. that address some of the, most of the issues that are in our uh, resolution. Mm -hmm. Yes. And this is new information. All right. And Mr. Seeley, I'm ready for you. Uh, One second. Okay. I mean, I see us moving in a, a better direction. Let me so. say, regardless of an outcome for a resolution, I, I, we want to do this MOU, this collective MOU. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Ms. Seeley. Colonel Hafner. Can we, what I'd like to see the board do, and, and this, I'm gonna try to summarize this, sum, summarize this and then sort of turn it into a motion. But what I'd like to see us do is give this 10 days. We can approve this and it sits 10 days with conditions. As a resolution, I've talked to the attorney, we can do this. Set some criteria, go to your leadership, in DC, find a date in the next, I know next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, is probably gonna be the fastest anybody's gonna get to this. Seven to 10 days, go through this and answer questions, come up with the MOU and do a face-to-face -face with some folks on, the, on, the, on this board, town council, and one or two folks from Portobago Bay and hammer through the issues that we have. I'm trying to look for common ground for all of us, and we've never been able to do this, but I know that your leadership needs to be there to make this binding. So I, what I'd like to do is make a motion that we answer questions in the resolution, answer questions from both, from the three bodies, at a joint meeting in less than 10 days the resolution goes away. Otherwise, we approve the resolution today and in 10 days it goes into effect. That way we all know what we're working towards and there won't be any sort of miscommunication or there won't be any misunderstandings. Um, and I think that's my motion. I'll second that. You want to do that just so that you all right the motion is I'm going to make sure that that I have this straight we're going to approve the resolution with a 10-day waiting period based on the meeting with the army with the leadership roles within that 10 days if the meeting takes place the resolution will be withdrawn but we do have to have an outcome that's that's amenable to the parties, and I don't mean everything for our side and everything for your side, but a, a solid agreement. And, and we all know who the players are. There's, there's no doubt about that. You good with that, Mr. Popowitz? All right, I'll second that again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, 
most been made as restated by uh, Mr. Seeley and also uh, Mr. Popowitz uh, second. Question? I do. Discussion? Mr. Akers. Uh, my question is, uh, you say we will withdraw the resolution. Uh, I thought we weren't going to do anything with the resolution. So are you saying we, we approve the resolution and it's sent to who it is that we plan to send the resolution to and who do we plan to send the resolution to? It sits 10 days, it doesn't go anywhere. No, but who do we plan to send the resolution to after 10 days? Is it the Department of Army? Is it to the Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel here? Is it to our congressional delegation? Uh, is it to, to each other? I mean, who do we send the, who do we send the, uh, the resolution to? I, I believe I can answer that, Mr. Hankers. I believe it needs to go to General Horst. A copy will go to the Colonel. A copy would go to our congressional delegation. Okay, so now we know who, who it's going to go to, but it's going to sit for 10 days and not do anything. Right. And if, if Lieutenant Colonel does what he says he wants to do within the 10 days, um, it will not be in withdrawal. It, how do we handle that? How do we, we just go in and do it with the resolution, Mr. Mr. Emerson? Yeah. Uh, if, if I may make a suggestion, we need, we need to actually put an amendment in there that there's a, there's a, resol there's a, there's a, a resolution to the issues at hand once we get have that meeting that that MOU has to be approved by our body the town and by the Puerto Vico Bay Association so you making an amendment to my motion I am making an amendment to your motion and I will second the amendment to my motion so we're gonna have to vote on this in the reverse we'll I well I accept the amendment to the motion we're gonna have to vote correspondingly Mr. Emerson no, you're no, as long as you accept it you want to vote. okay as long as you accept it, we're ready to go. There's no issue with what we're doing, correct? No, I don't think so. I mean, it's a conditional, um, uh, it's an approval of the resolution to become effective at a, at a future date unless certain conditions take place, in which case it would never become effective. So there's no withdrawal, it just dies. The it just, just dies. dies. It just dies. All right, uh, Mr. Thomas, question. Colonel, before we make it a moot point, can you do something within 10 days? Because you did say it ain't going to happen, so can you do something within 10 days? We can get leadership. Okay. Now, if there's a preconceived notion exactly who that person is, I, I think that needs to be clear. You know, I can get leadership, okay? I, I need to know if it's a specific person that you're looking for, yep. I need to know that. Commander-in-Chief. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be here this summer. I, I want somebody that... <laughs> the that, Jamboree. That, yeah, <laughs> we're looking forward we'll to seeing wait a little bit, though. If, if, if I may, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, uh, somebody with enough butt to sign the MOU. And, and I anticipate the MOU would have a signing, a General Horse signature on it. Okay. That's, that's what I want. Okay. So you want him here or somebody to speak in his stead so he can execute signature? I want somebody with enough butt to make the decisions and to be actually, be actually okay. able to negotiate with to us. And, and, and then if he signs it, that's fine. Okay. But that's what I want. Okay. Okay, motions have been made in uh, proper second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, same. All right, motion carried. So we appreciate uh, what you guys are doing and trying to make us, you know, get hedged in the right direction. And uh, Mr. Popovich, we certainly understand you know, your concerns and for your co constituents. And, uh, you know, again, tough decisions. And we all have to make sure we understand what these decisions are. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chairman, board. Okay, uh, next uh, we will move right into the uh, public hearing. And as we move into the public hearing, as we said earlier, uh, you should have signed up. Uh, the sign up sheet is down here on the press table. And before we go into that, again, the uh, county administrator will present the opening comments for the budget. And Mrs. Hall, do you have your. Uh, rules that you can read for us once again the public hearing okay all right the 
they're, they're the same. Uh, yeah, go ahead and read them. Yeah. Right. That's correct. Just put less than on there. We'll just write your name on the bottom. <coughs> less than. Less than. Oh, no. Who? No. Here is no. No. <coughs> you get to read that. I really wish this Hall. The public hearing and public comment period shall be for the purpose of allowing the public to speak to the board on any matter which is not scheduled for public. Well, that doesn't really apply. Um, public comment period shall be for the purpose of allowing anyone to speak to the board on the public hearing that is scheduled on tonight's agenda. To help conduct the public, to conduct the public hearing in a manner that is orderly and efficient, please refrain from clapping or other public demonstrations of support or opposition. Public. Hearing period shall not serve as a forum for debate with the board or a question and answer period with the board. Remarks shall be addressed only to the board and not to staff, the audience, or the media. All public comments shall be made in a respectful manner. Cursing and antagonistic behavior are prohibited and shall be grounds for removal from the meeting. Comments should focus on matters or issues before the board or county and not the individual board members or staff. Comments which single out an individual board member or any ma or staff may be ruled out of order by the chair. Each speaker shall clearly state his or her name, address, and voting district if applicable. There shall be a time limit for each individual speaker of three minutes. If you're speaking for a group, you will be allowed five minutes. No speaker shall address the board more than once during the public comment period at any single board meeting. The county administrator will time the speakers and notify them when their time has expired. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Hall. And uh, at this time, Mr. Uh, Ashcraft will present the opening comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, ladies and gentlemen. On February the 23rd, I presented the proposed budget that's before you this evening for FY 2011. And in a few minutes, there'll be a public hearing on that proposal and its contents therein. But before I open uh, or ask the chairman to open the public hearing, I'd like to clarify a few points contained in the budget document that hopefully will lead to a better understanding of what is being proposed from what I did on February the 23rd. First, the county budget is broken down into three separate budget units. The overall budget, the operating budget, and the general fund budget. The overall budget is the accounting of all county funds, which includes capital expenditures, public school spending, utility spending, and the remainder of those funds in the general fund. And at the time I gave the budget presentation, it was stated that the county had increased its overall budget by $3.6 million. And at that time, and Chairman Roselle explained this very well at a public hearing on the school budget on March the 1st, that $3.5 million of that amount is for capital items that have been budgeted but not yet funds have been approved or borrowed. The Board of Supervisors still has to deal with these projects, and these projects include the expansion of our wastewater treatment plant, continuing the permitting for the Rappahannock River <coughs> water withdrawal, funding for the county's interim water system. These funds, if borrowed for these purposes, cannot be used anywhere else within county government operations. This is not discretionary money that can be used to plug any revenue shortfalls that we've heard in previous weeks and has been reiterated this evening. Now also at the time of my presentation, the public school division had not yet adopted its final budget. So contained in my proposal was the division's last year budget number, less 40, 421,000 in the local contribution. So tonight, I call your attention to the revised overall budget, which is now just $1.2 million greater than last year, or a 1.5% increase that includes now 
the capital projects that I just mentioned, and the revised school numbers that Dr. Kello proposed earlier this evening. Now, Mr. Chairman, the second point I want to raise is that in the definition of the operating budget, this includes everything but capital spending. And this revised number, now that we have the new school numbers, is now $2.3 million less than last year. It is not a greater number. And the general fund, where the local contribution to the public school division is drawn from, is only $100,000 less, or is, is less than last year. It is not greater. There's been a lot stated that everyone needs to share equally in the reductions within our county government and our county operation. I suggest to you this evening that this county government on this side is sharing that pain equally. Now, Mr. Chairman, the third point is the fire and rescue budget. Last year, the Board of Supervisors approved the reorganization of the fire and rescue department that led to the hiring of the county's first fire chief. And along with that responsibility of combining all the fire and rescue operations, both volunteer and career, comes under one command. This does not happen without a price. And it includes, yes, the salary of the fire chief. Our fire chief and other county department heads are paid competitive wages for their professional abilities, their professional training, and everything that is going in to make them the, the professionals in which they are. Just as assistant superintendents, principals, teachers, and any other professional who may be doing the good that is contained within this government. The salary of the fire chief was called out in a recent letter to the editor, but it would only seem fair to me, Mr. Chairman, that if we are going to call people out, that we need to include all administrative executives in that same breath because we're all paid out of the same general fund operation. I would also like to reiterate Mr. Akers' comments earlier this evening that this budget proposes to reduce county employee salaries by 1 to 2 percent depending on what side of $40,000 that they happen to be earning. This includes all of us, Mr. Chairman, not a select few. And as for the rest of the increase in the fire and rescue budget, this proposal attempts to position staff to respond to calls more quickly and provide a, broad, provide a broader coverage throughout the county. Public safety response has always been a top priority for our citizens in any survey that we've conducted. And, and this budget attempts to shorten the period in which it takes a citizen to receive an ambulance, a sheriff's deputy, or a fire truck, depending on the call and the nature of that call. Mr. Chairman, this budget includes no tax increase. Difficult as it may be, and as easy as it could have been on the, on the other side of that coin, to just generate new money. I think those statistics have been stated very well this evening. The condition of our citizenry and the reaction to such a tax increase could be devastating to homes and the families that are contained within. So as a result, I did not recommend any tax increase. But on the other side of that coin, I did recommend that the county's workforce be reduced by 13 net positions one of the toughest things I've ever had to do in my professional time here. So finally, Mr. Chairman, I remind the citizens that the General Assembly is still wrestling with proposals that will affect this budget. And we're all hopeful that the cuts that have been proposed by either the school board or the county administration will not be as devastating as we hope that they will be. But unfortunately, these are proposals that we are at the mercy of others who are making decisions at a higher level than what we are. But one thing we do know is that less money is coming to Carolina County when, it, when the wind is blown than it is today. And that we have to do more as government employees on all levels. We have to do more with less. 
That is a certain fact. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Ashcraft, we, we appreciate that introduction into the budget uh, this evening, and we'll move in to the uh, public hearing. Before we open the public hearing, are there any questions of uh, board members of, of uh, staff or county administrator? Okay, seeing no interest in that, we'll move forward to the public hearing, and uh, we'll now declare the public hearing open for the proposed fiscal year 2010 2011 budget and uh, would invite uh, members of the uh, the public to come forth now and when you come forth state your I have the name well we get, we got your name we're going to read them off but just uh, again uh, state your name in your voting district and you can it's okay to line up we'll call the second person that's uh, that's in line so we can proceed through this evening. Um, and again, as the rules are, if you're with a group, you, if you represent a group, uh, you know, let us know which group beforehand and we'll give you five minutes. Okay, first our thing. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Our first speaker this evening is Kimberly Utterbrink. Utterbrink, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. And Crystal Patterson will follow her. Good evening, gentlemen. I am here on behalf of the Mattapai Voting District. Um, I'm also here as a parent of two children in the elementary level of Caroline County Schools. The first thing that I would like for you all to think about is if you had a child in the Caroline County Public Schools, wouldn't you want them to have the best education possible? That's what I want for my children, the best education possible. So I feel that we should support our school board. By, by, by supporting our school board, we're supporting our children and our children are our future. That's all I have to say. Thank you. All right, thank you, ma'am. Next speaker is Crystal Patterson to be followed by Jamie Sotzing. Good evening. My name is Crystal Patterson and I reside in the Reedy Church District. Chairman Rizell and members of the board, thank you for your time tonight. I am a lifelong resident of Caroline County, a product of Caroline County Public Schools from grades pre-K through 12 and a pre-K teacher at Madison Elementary. I said I wasn't going to do this. As a product of Caroline Schools, I've witnessed firsthand the progress we have made since I graduated almost 15 years ago. Technology is being integrated into our schools. We are offering a variety of programs to meet the different needs of our children, and our schools are staffed by highly qualified individuals. Without the necessary funding, we cannot maintain the quality of education that we have worked so hard to provide our children. We would be unable to maintain equipment, provide necessary supplies for our children, facilitate learning for all children due to increased class size and lack of support from instructional assistance, as well as provide educational programs for at-risk children and gifted children. As a pre-K teacher, I realize the importance of providing a solid foundation for our children. The first part of a house that is built is its foundation because without it, the house would fall. The same is true in education. Without the VPI program, which was created to provide at-risk four-year-olds the intervention needed to be successful in kindergarten and beyond, our children will begin to fall farther and farther behind. At the White House Summit on Early Childhood Cognitive Development in July of 2001, former First Lady Laura Bush stated that we all have the duty to call attention to the science and seriousness of early childhood cognitive development because the years between birth and five are the foundation upon which successful lives are built. I know firsthand what it's like to lack a solid foundation in a subject area. It is something that I was never able to overcome, despite years of further education. I ask that you please consider the impact the county's budget will have on our children. Scour it for places to compensate for the shortfall to our public schools. Work collaboratively with our school board members, and please do so with our children in mind. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. Next speaker is Jamie Sotzing, to be followed by Mike Rains. Hopefully you guys can see me. That's why I teach kindergarten, because my students will always be smaller than I am. Um, good right. evening, my name is Jamie Sotzing, and I reside in the Madison District. Um, I have two children in the Caroline County Public Schools, and I am a teacher for Caroline County. I'm here tonight to ask the board to reconsider the amount of funding being allocated for public education. Despite what many believe to be insurmount insurmountable odds, 
For the first time ever, all Caroline County Public Schools are fully accredited and made AYP. This is an amazing feat that was made possible by the hard work and dedication of every staff member. It was also made possible because the school board was able to institute many programs aimed at bringing up student achievement, programs that the school board will be forced to cut due to a lack of funding. I understand that your board does not dictate how the school board will for sorry. I understand that your board does not dictate how the school system chooses to spend its money. However, we all know that if funding is not there, then the system is forced to make cuts. I fear what will become of our students if education is not made a priority. We need to send a message to each and every child in this county that they are valuable and that we will stop at nothing to provide a quality education. If the board adopts the proposed 2010-2011 budget as is, we are letting our children down. Our children cannot afford these budget cuts. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next speaker is Mike Rains, to be followed by Lori Brown. Chairman Roselle, members of the board, good evening. Good evening. My name is Mike Rains. I'm from the Bowling Green District. Um, although I'm an employee of the Caroline County Public Schools, I'm here tonight as a parent and a citizen of the county. Um, I have uh, four children between my wife and I who have been successful graduates of these school systems. One is a lawyer, one is a uh, radiologist, one is a licensed electrician, one in college. And we can all thank this educational system in Carolina for their success. I've been here for 30 years this August and I've seen the county go through a lot. Tremendous gains in 30 years made possible by the efforts of teachers, administrators, and support staff. We cannot afford to take a step backwards. We all know the economic situation our county, state, and nation currently faces and the very difficult position that places you, our local government representatives, in. However, we are now at a crisis. And permit me to illustrate this. Think about this for a minute. From the time the first school buses dropped off our children at their schools on the East Coast this morning, to the time the last school buses in Hawaii dropped off the children at their homes, which is just about now, over 7,000 of our children in this nation will have dropped out of school. That means every year approximately 1.2 million high school students will not graduate. It's been estimated that those 1.2 million students who should have graduated with a class of 2008 will cost the nation nearly $319 billion in lost income over the course of their lifetimes. It is an annual pattern if allowed to continue more than 12 million students will drop out of school during the next decade at a cost of, to the nation of more than $3 trillion. Why is this an issue now? As we all know, there have always been students who didn't finish school and many have gone on to do well in life. However, today's economy is much more global. Whereas past generations of Americans only had to compete for jobs with students from Boston or Birmingham, our students have to compete with students from Bangalore to Bangkok. The rapidly growing markets of the past quarter century have created a global economy with very real international competition. And our students drop out for a variety of reasons. Low reading scores is, is a predictor. And research shows that factors starting in middle school contribute to students dropping out, including academic performance in English and math. Caroline County Public Schools is and has been tackling this enormous issue since I've been here, much more now. We've tackled this problem with great effort and much success, and I'm so proud of the gains we have made improving our reading and writing scores. We cannot afford to cut any of these programs. We need them all. Teach students at our diversified learning center who may have been one or more of the, could have been one or more of the statistics that I previously quoted, are in many cases being successful for the first time. We can't afford to leave them behind. I urge you to support our school board and Dr. Killer's budget. As a member of the Virginia Consortium of Social Studies Specialists, I have been all around the state with many dif different colleagues. And we are not, our, our budget is not a lot of fluff. It's bare bones, it, and we need to keep it. Thank you very much. 
Next speaker is Lori Brown, to be followed by Melanie Brown. Before I read what I prepared, I want to tell you, in 1976, I was in third grade. The teacher's name was Betty Arban. She stood about this tall with brown hair, and she loved owls. And she made a huge impact on my life. I will always remember exactly what she looks like. Having said that, have you all ever seen the program Life After People? Well, let's replace that with Life After Teachers. Children will be undereducated with more and more falling through the cracks. The No Child Left Behind Act will be eliminated, as without qualified teachers, children would obviously get left behind. Some teachers would be forced to quit their jobs because they couldn't afford the supplies that their classroom needed just to sustain a minimal teaching environment. PTAs would struggle to make parents aware of events because schools would no longer allow them to make 400 plus copies per week for fear the copier would break or the paper or toner would run out and no money to fix it. Teachers who relied on smart boards would be forced to stop using them as they could no longer afford the $300 light bulbs. And what would happen to God's most special children, those in special ed? A large portion of them would end up in institutions or parents would be forced to quit their jobs to stay home and take care of them. This would send us further into economic and educational disaster. What of the hearing impaired, vision impaired, and those who require speech therapy? Without the qualified and compassionate teachers to give these children the special help they need, they will not become productive members of society. If pre-K funding is cut, the children will struggle in kindergarten as they won't have the minimal skills required to jumpstart their education. If funding to the governor's schools is cut, those children who are more advanced will become bored in school, ending up with the wrong crowd and never realizing their potential. Soon, a prerequisite for becoming President of the United States would not be having a law degree because our children wouldn't have the education required to get into law school. But all of this is just one concerned parent's opinion, and in the end, there will always be service organizations who are desperate for workers and will not care if they have a college degree or, for that matter, a high school diploma. Yes, I will agree that funding probably does need to be cut. However, teachers are not the funding that needs to be cut. I am asking that the Board of Supervisors review money that is being allotted elsewhere and consider giving those funds to the school board so that our children can make a difference in their and our future. Thank you. So what, what district are you parent or I'm teacher? Sorry. Yeah. Reedy Church. Reedy Church. Yes. Next speaker is Melanie Brown to be followed by Les Stanley. Good evening. My name is Melanie Brown, 557 Red Ground Drive, um, the Madison District. I've been teaching for 14 years. I'm a mother of two children, one in Madison Elementary and a four-year-old about to enter kindergarten this fall. I taught in Spotsylvania County in um, Waynesboro City Schools and now Caroline. I consider myself to be a dedicated teacher and an effective teacher. I'm standing before you now with concerns for the Caroline County Schools. I'm concerned about our children and about our teachers. I currently work from 8.10 until 5.30 and then from 9 to 11 p.m. daily. I tutor 16 children. I'm taking a graduate level science class. I host a practicum student and I am mentoring a new teacher. I serve on several <coughs> school communities and I volunteer for PTA activities. I spend my own personal money on classroom supplies, professional books, science materials, my husband and my children continually sacrifice family time to take a back seat to my professional obligations. I'm wondering what more can I do and what more can I give? Losing teachers will mean bigger class sizes and additional duties for the remaining teachers. Again, I'm asking what more can I do and what more can I give? I cannot work more hours. I cannot continue to afford to spend money on the classroom needs. I cannot add additional duties to my schedule. I am already giving all that I can give. I am asking you to fully fund the Caroline County School Board budget. Our county and our children cannot afford to lose dedicated and effective teachers. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Next speaker is Les Stanley to be followed by Carrie Bischoff. Mr. Stanley, thank Mr. you very Stanley, much. Before you start, would, would you close that computer in front of you, please? Thank you, sir. No problem. Um, first of all, I'd like to say uh, good evening uh, to everyone. My name is Les Stanley, and I'm from the Bowling Green District. And uh, last year, I was here to speak to you at the budget hearing, and it was fairly lonely 
the gentleman from the uh, Sheriff's Department and myself, I believe we're the only two that spoke. Um, I do want to uh, speak a little bit uh, tonight about schools uh, and a little bit about economic development. Uh, Rudyard Kipling uh, did a poem called If, and he was speaking to his son. He was saying, if you can keep your head when others are losing theirs and blaming you. Uh, I just want to say I don't envy you. Uh, public service is not always easy, and uh, God be with you as you make the decisions that you need to make. Uh, I do want to say thank you for no tax increase. Uh, at least that proposal. Uh, Mr. Rizal in the editorial talked about uh, the money for utilities. Money's been borrowed and has to be spent for that. And that's for economic development. And I, I certainly am not against economic development. I think everyone would like to see the economy in uh, Caroline certainly be diversified as much as possible and for it to grow. I guess my concern is we continue to put money, and I said this last year, uh, into water and sewer and into utilities and into the ground. I know that money has been lent from the general fund in previous years. Uh, there was once a rainy day fund that we had, uh, and it was not so many years ago, and that money w uh, also was lent uh, to utilities to cover a lot of things. And that $2 million that was in that rainy day fund certainly would be nice to help with some of the issues that, that you're facing now. I just want to say, and I said this last year, and I really want to emphasize it, true economic development, utilities, all that's important, but you can't forget schools. When a new person comes to the county and they're looking around to buy a home, one of the first questions they're going to ask is how are their schools? When a company wants to relocate to Caroline County, one of the first questions they're going to ask, how are the schools. In Caroline County, all of the schools are fully accredited and made AYP. I'm a retired educator from Henrico County, and I think when you say Henrico County Public Schools, people say, pretty good school system. My wife retired from Chesterfield County Public Schools. I think if you talk with someone in this state, they would say, pretty good school system. Neither one of those pretty good school systems have every one of their schools accredited and every one of their schools making AYP. It was done here in Caroline County and it was done by the blood, sweat, toil, and yes, tears of the teachers. They have worked extremely hard here. There's no question about that. And they certainly deserve uh, support for that. I think it's time to support our schools. Thank you, I'll go quickly. I want us to see, I want to see us go forward, not backwards. I want to see us put our money into children and to our future and not into the ground. Thank you very much. Next speaker is Kerry Bischoff to be followed by Jason Satterwhite. Good evening. Good evening I'm Kerry. Kerry Bischoff and I'm in the Bowling Green District. Uh, I didn't come here to talk tonight, but I felt moved that I, I thought I should. Um, I'm an advocate of the school system. I think everybody up here knows that. Um, it is important that we invest in our school system. It's what builds this county. Um, when I first came here some 15 years ago, the big talk was rooftops would build this county. Uh, the reality is school system is what will build this county. So I'm an advocate for it, but at the same time, I believe that they have a responsibility, and I'll speak to that board about that responsibility when I see them. Uh, I'm here to speak to you that I think you guys can do some more work yourselves. I think you can find things within your system to generate money. One of them, maintenance of your vehicles. We have a fine mechanical facility in the school system. You can double your money. You can spend your money with the school system. They need less. You don't need to spend anymore. Something you need to look at. I think you've done it in the past. We need to go back to that. There's a lot of ways that we can do it. You need to think outside the box. We're, we're caught up in a very, very tough situation here in our country, and everybody's emotions are high, including mine. Uh, I've said things that I probably shouldn't have said in the recent past, had attitude that I shouldn't have had, and we need to really refocus and take care of us. Forget what's going on around us. Take care of us. Take care of our children. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. Next registered speaker. And the last one on this list, Jason Satterwhite. If anyone would like to 
to speak that's not on the list, just come forward to the, to the front if you would please. Thank you. First off, I want to start by thanking each one of the board members for showing the support in the fire and rescue and the emergency services over the years. Um, with your support, we have, we've been